Hello, this is Pastor Judy Carney, Pastor Teacher from Aquin, Ohio, Spirit of the Dove Ministry. Again, I get to come and to talk to my friends. This is such a wonderful time of the year to do that. You know, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, but there's things we need to know. Maybe this teacher will help you understand Jesus so to know why he came as we get into the subject next week, which I know you're going to love. I love it. My class loved it. And I know that you're going to love it because it's all about Jesus. And today is too. And I think that as we talk about Jesus at this time of the year, the anointing of the blood of Jesus and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the true word of God, we're going to get there, children. We're going to make it. When Jesus comes back, I'm praying that all my viewers and everybody will be rapture ready, rapture ready to make it when Jesus comes back. That's my main call. My main call is to get people ready to be rapture ready. Because that lets me know at 84, he's letting me stay here to help get them, get you into the mood of being ready for the be when Jesus comes to pick his bride up. Honey, we're going to make it, children. We're going to make it. We're going to make it because of the blood of Jesus, the true word of God, and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I know we're going to make it. My title of this topic today is, The Truth Will Set You Free. <clears throat> and the subtopic, Jesus is the truth. And that's what he came for, that we would know truth. Truth will set us free, and then we're going to make it, children, in everything, either by the grave or by the rapture, we're going to make heaven. We're heaven-bound through the blood of Jesus. So with our subtopic is Jesus is the truth, I'll get into right away. I have several opening scriptures today, which is somewhat unusual. I usually don't have that many, but I'm going to start with reading the opening scripture. So if you have a Bible ready, uh, we'll go to John, first of all, 14 and 6. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man's going to come to the Father. No way to get into heaven. No way to see the Father but through the blood of Jesus. You know, the Father sent him to us next week. You'll know what I'm talking about, about Christmas and the, and the wonderful thing that was given to us. And then I'm going to go to John 8, 31 and 32. <clears throat> then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And the 32nd verse is, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I don't see any maybes. The truth is going to make you free. What truth? The truth about Jesus, the truth of the Bible, the truth about the Holy Ghost, the truth of the rapture, the truth the truth of God, the Word of God, the truth. Then I go to Thess 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 and 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, is they might be saved. There are people that don't want that. Number 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Number 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There are people that do not want to have the truth. They are in the pleasures of the world, but they're sure not in the pleasures of the righteousness of God. They're unrighteous. They're not right. They're not going to be right without the truth, without Jesus, without the blood. Then I'm taking you to 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. And as I read it, we'll say, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers with itching ears. And they shall turn away their they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. Children, I've seen it. I've visited ministries where I used to see all the truth. i visited to see, and in there, they're not giving all the truth. They're getting people, maybe, that maybe some of them, maybe they'll get them saved. But I don't see them offering in the Pentecostal churches that I used to go visit. I don't see them offering the Holy Ghost. They take it as they would you like to instead of as a command. And I know that the book, the Bible tells me, it is the command to get it because in Acts, the, the first chapter, the first and fifth verses that you read, it says, and Jesus commanded them to get the Holy Ghost. He didn't want them out there preaching or teaching his disciples until they had the fullness of the Spirit because Jesus was full of the Spirit when he was out there. What does that make people think? He went, he's not unequally yoked with his bride. We're going to have the same things in us that Jesus had in him. We're going to have everything. We're going to have the power. We're going to have the blood. We're going to have the truth. We're going to have, we're going to have the word just ready to flow out to help others to be ready. And then I went to John 14, 16, and 17. <clears throat> and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, 
that he may abide with you forever. Well, John was doing this because he said, and Jesus said, it's expedient for him to go. Because if he doesn't go, he can't send the Holy Ghost. Well, if he had to go, what does people think that that another, the sinner says that I will send you another is not the Holy Ghost? What makes them think that the Jesus dispensation closed with the, with the blood for grace, but it didn't take us into the fullness for the rapture, the, the changing power, the power to get us ready. Children, you're being, you're being, if you're in churches that are not teaching the full truth, you're being robbed. You're being robbed of a way out of here. You know, your passport isn't being stamped fully. You don't have that approval on it if you don't have all of what you need. It says, number 17 out of John 14, even the spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, nor neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He dwelleth with you and in you. Remember the Holy Ghost came, but he said, no, he came, but he wanted to come in you. He knew of him, but he said, now I'm going to be in you. We were drawn by the Spirit for salvation. Now he says, I want to come in. People, get the truth. Don't sit there with ignorance and expect to be ready when Jesus comes. Ignorance is not going to get it. He said, I, he said, I, we, I once went in ignorance, but no more. Why? Because you've got the Bible. Because you've got the truth. Because you've got the Word. Because you've got the blood. Because you've got the holiness of God at your fingertips if you'll just take it. Just receive it, children, as the way you get it. And now I'm going to go into the introduction to this teaching. And I will read it as, and as I read it, I want you to understand. I'm going to read it to you and prayerfully you will receive it. <clears throat> it says, as I, as I prepared this teaching, the Holy Ghost revealed to me that many of his blood-bought children do not have all of his truths. They are still in churches that are not bringing a full gospel teaching to them. So they are unprepared to make the one flight out when Jesus comes to take his bride. That's sad. <clears throat> that, is, <clears throat> that is truly sad to me. That is truly sad to me. They're not making them fully prepared. We must get fully prepared. Believe me when I tell you many, many preachers and teachers today are not preparing their people with rapture teaching. So they are weak, unprepared to go in Jesus' bridal party. So many ministers are not teaching on the third person of the Godhead. They refuse to teach on the Holy Ghost baptism with the outward evidence of speaking in tongues. This is the Holy Ghost dispensation, and the bride of Christ will have to have this infilling of the Spirit to be ready to go with our groom, Jesus. <clears throat> in the first dispensation, the Father gave them the law, and they obeyed the law. In the second dispensation, the Father gave them grace and salvation by his shed blood. We need, for this, we need this for the forgiveness of our sins, and without it, there's no no way that we can get into heaven. No way to heaven without the blood. So the, the law was, was to give us the, the law, and that was fulfilled, and then he sent Jesus with grace. Now the next sensation is the power. The power to get us out. The power for our flight. <clears throat> Jesus left us saying, it is expedient for me to leave. So he could send us the precious Holy Ghost, bringing us the third dispensation, and that's in John 6, 7. We had the power with, we had the Father with the law, we had Jesus with grace and the Holy Ghost with power, rapture power. These are the truths sent to you by the Holy Spirit, John 8 and 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But listen to the truth. Don't listen to fables. Don't listen to what some churches are saying that are because of their dispensation. Do not do that, children. Truth means in the Bible reference companion that I'm giving you, that which is reliable, trustworthy, and consistent with the character and the revelation of God. That's truth. Now the Webster's Dictionary, it even said, truth, number one, being true, being specific, sincere, and honest. B, conformity with fact, and the fact, and the reality. Actual existence, and D, correctness and accuracy. Number two, that is, which is true. Number three, an established fact and truth truly truthful, which is your adjective, telling the truth honest, corresponding with fact or reality. Now let's say even they know, and they're trying to get you to realize what truth means. I'm trying to get you into the truth, and not only know that what it means, to receive it and use the truth. The truth is, should be in you, to be with you. And in our class read today, 
It is in John 14, 1 through, through 31. <clears throat> I will read this to you, but I'm expecting you to get your Bibles then, and after I'm gone, you will get your Bibles and you will restudy it. We're going to read it, and there will be certain things I'll bring out, certain things you're going to have to study. That's why I want you to learn how to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're going to learn through some of this. So you're going to get into this John 14, 1 through 31. First verse, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is saying, believe in him. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And what a price he paid for our place to go. But he did pay the price with his life, with his blood, with his going to Calvary. Number three, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's what we want. We want to be with him. Four, number four, and whither I go, you know, and the way you know, you know the way to get there. You have to follow the footsteps of Jesus. You have to follow the word of God. You have to listen to what he said. You have to do what he said. You have to be willing to not be just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Help other people find out the truth. Number th number five in John 14 is, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we, not whither, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Well, this is the answer. Number six, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So our truth is just what I said. Jesus is the truth. Number seven, if, you've known, if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and, and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. That was number eight. Number nine, and Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not see, known me, Philip? He that has seen my hath seen the Father, he that has seen me has seen the Father, excuse me. And now how sayest thou then show us the Father? In other words, he was like the Father. He was sent as part of the Father. He was sent to us through through the very seed that the Holy Ghost took of the Father and put in the womb of the Virgin Mary. He was like unto the Father. He was sent to us. And see the Father in him. See see the Holy Ghost and see See, see Jesus is what he came for. Number 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. He was even subject to listen to what his Father said. Now we have to listen to what the Father, the Son, will say. But then we're going to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which will help us understand, to be a better understanding of the word. Because he's going to know it and he's going to teach us. He's our teacher. He said he's going to be our teacher. What a wonderful teacher. Number 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, I've got a work to do through the Father. Believe me so I can get this work done. Believe me. He's saying believe me. In other words, trust me. I'm, I've been here to help you. And number 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Well, that doesn't mean we're going to be greater than Jesus. It's just more of these works should be gone up by people who are telling the same thing Jesus did. More people working this work that he brought. More of us covering the face of the earth. We don't have to go by camel or by foot. We can go by airplane. We can go by train, by plane. We can go there. We got many ways of getting there that Jesus didn't have, so it doesn't mean we're going to do anything better, but we're going to be more working at it. Number 13 out of John 14 says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, in the name of Jesus, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Father will be glorified because the Son's going to come, He's going to bring healing in His wings, He's going to do many things for us. Number 14 in that, If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We have to ask in the name of Jesus. Keep this in mind as we read this, because I said Jesus is the truth. Number 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's given us commandments. We did the commandments of the Ten Commandments, and Jesus left us commandments. That's what we have to do. Keep the commands of Jesus so that we can get there. Number 16 of John 14 says, And I will pray the Father, and what? He shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. 
when he comes in, he'll never leave. If he, if he leaves you, it's because you went back to sin. But he won't leave. He'll still draw on you. He'll stay there to draw on you. You'll walk away from him, but he's not, he'll always be there to try to pull you. He'll always try to pull you. You won't have the same communication you had if you were obeying him, but he'll try to pull you back. Number 18, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He's going to be our comforter. And isn't that one? When we, when we need comfort, we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. And then we have the Holy Spirit who comes in. He starts to comfort us. What do people know? I've had something today that came two days in my life you know, with short things that I needed his comfort. I got it not from people, but I got it from the comfort of the blood and the comforter who prayed through me in the Spirit. My comfort came from somebody else through my sorrows that I had received. <clears throat> Number 19. Yet a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. What a promise. Because Jesus lives, we're going to live too. Because of his blood, because he came, because of his shed blood, because he told us the truth about the Holy Ghost. He told us to go and receive the Holy Ghost. Listen to him. Obey the Spirit. Number 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, remember keeping them, he, is, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. What a manifestation of truth that is. He's going to come right and manifest himself in the human beings. But he's going to show himself. My, my wonder. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Number 22. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not into the world? And Jesus answered him and said, Number 23. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He's going to, they're going to come and live with us, live within us to help us, be in us, help us to do the mind, get the mind of Christ. He said he'll give us that mind, and that will be taken over, and he's going to come and live with us. I want him to abide in me. I want him to be there. I want him to be there so that when, so that when I do come to you, it's not going to be me. It's going to be he, Jesus. It's going to be the Son of God is going to be the power of the Word. It's going to be the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm a nobody, but there's something that you need to learn, and you need to learn the truth, so the truth will let you be free. Number two, number John 14, 24 says, He that loveth me not keepeth not my saying, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. He's trying to say, they're putting me off. They're wanting to do other things, but I, you won't have it, children. We're not going to make it without that true love. We're... we're we're condemned if we don't keep all that love. We have to have it. We need it. If we don't, we're, we will actually be losing something that is most important, the truth. Number 25 out of the, in their class read is 1425 out of John. These things that I've spoken unto you, being yet present with you. See, he knew he was going to, he was getting ready. To, he prepared the disciples and all of us. He said, but number 26, the but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. And as we get the Holy Ghost and we read the Bible, the words of Jesus, they'll come back to us because he's there to keep us in mind. He's the Holy Ghost to say, well, don't you remember where you read in there? And he said, I'll come back. As it says, the things that I've done, I'll do greater. Those things, he brings them back to your remembrance. Remembrance. I love that. Many times I'll be very down and I'll just need him. And I'll just sit there and I'll just think, now where do I go, Lord? I was in that position this morning. And as I cried out before God, the Holy Ghost prayed to me. I came out of it victorious. 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 Victory in Jesus. Remember that song? Every once in a while I sing it. Here, I'm not a singer, but they suffer through it. We make it. Victory in Jesus. Yes, that is where our victory is. Number 27 in John 14 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, it, give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The world, the, the kind of world peace, I was in that world peace, but I had a lot of a fear, a lot of afraid of what I was going to face. And I would even go to bed at night before I was in a ministry was said that if I wasn't in their denomination, I was going to not make it. And I didn't want me because I had married and divorced. They didn't want me. But I'd go to bed pulling the covers up around me thinking I had to go to hell because of false doctrine. I'd never been saved. I wasn't in false doctrine. I just didn't have any teaching about the true things about Jesus. 
I'm laying there shivering in my boots thinking I can't get in because of a denomination. Come on, let's get into reality. No denomination is going to get me to heaven. The blood of Jesus and the truth, the truth, the truth. But I didn't know that. But thank God that God took me somewhere where I found out the truth. Number 28 says, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And that's what we have to remember when Easter comes. He's not on that cross. He's resurrected. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. Sorrow for what he had to do to pay for mine and your sins, but rejoice, rejoice. He's not dead. He's alive and alive forevermore. Thank God. Number 29. Now I have told you before it come to pass that when it has come to pass, you might believe. He told us all this thing to keep us to believe in belief. Number 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. He did. He came, and he's got nothing in me. You don't have anything in me anymore. The Bible said, be holy as I am holy. I'm living a holy life. I'm living a life that I can say I belong to the Lord. We don't do the things that we used to do. He says, when you take, when you get saved, you, you become a new creature. So if you're a new creature, why do you go back to the old one? The old creature that was full of sin. Sickening. Sick to God. It, 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 it makes me want to vomit sometimes to hear how people play around with half in and half out. Oh, I go to church, my blah, blah, blah. This church will keep me. No, it won't. You know, he'll get you the blood of Jesus, the power of the word, and the truth. That'll get you to heaven. Just like I said, Jesus is the truth. Number 31. It says, and this is the ending of John 14, 30, and it says, 31 says, but the world, that, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so do I do. Arise, let us go hence. And I say that to you today. Those of you that are out there, those of you that would like to be partners with me, those of you that want to arise now, come out of your slothfulness, come out of your drunkenness, and come into the spirit of truth of, of dunking the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Let's come out of that mind con that keeps you from wanting the truth because it's been bogged down for years with untruth. Untruth. Get into the truth so the truth can make you free. And I will tell you this in the conclusion. He says, with this study, I am sure we have found that Jesus came and is our truth by his divine blood. We can be free from all sin and by study of the Holy Bible. We can stay prepared to be free and holy as the word of God tells us, be ye holy as I am holy. And that's First Peter 1 Peter 1.16. If we stay that way, if you say daily, I want to be holy as my Lord. I want the anointing of the blood. I want to be free of any temptations. I want to go into the truth of God and stay there. He'll bring you there. Trust me. He says, he never told us to do anything that is impossible. Keep this scripture on in mind. Nothing is impossible with God. Luke 1 37. As we look, as we look to our Jesus, we will, as, excuse me, as we look to our Jesus, he will help us stay pure, stay, stay true and holy. See you in the rapture. But before I leave you, I've got some things I need to do. That was in the class where they see you in the rapture. I still want to see you all in the rapture too. But before we do that, I've come to the point that in this ministry, I can't say goodbye till I offer Jesus to blood salvation. So we're going to do Jesus. We're going to do the Holy Ghost baptism. And I'm going to pray for the sick. I've started doing this to make people realize we're getting people that are coming to the, to the Bible studies are getting miracles. People that are coming that are hearing of it are getting miracles it's fantastic that god says i'm the same yesterday today and forever and when i look into the bible he's at a miracle service so don't fall short on getting a miracle for your health if you're sick and you really need it, if you got aids if you've got cancer if you've got something the doctor said impossible remember what i said nothing is impossible with god and that's not if we make it an impossibility but not through him so the sinner's prayer is just close your eyes, you people that are out there that do not have Jesus invited into your heart. Just close your eyes, look up into the heavens and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. I'm a sinner. I know that I've sinned against you, Lord. I am so sorry. Forgive me of all of my sins. I know that the blood of Jesus is there, that Jesus, when you came, you said that I could ask and you would forgive me through that blood. I'm asking you, come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. I will serve you, Lord, the rest of my life. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. Now, if you've said that, 
from your heart, and you meant it, you're saved. You are that new creature I spoke about in Christ Jesus. You're ready to stay. You're ready to go out now. You know that you are ready for the grave, that Jesus said, by these stripes I am healed. Those healed your sin life now, and that part of you is ready to go if you have Jesus. Now I'm going to call the Holy Ghost on those of you. It's, it's when they, we say, we say the Holy Ghost to come upon you, and you start praising the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. And as the Holy Ghost takes you over, you'll feel change in your your words, they won't want to come out right. Just start praising him and saying, love you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Those of you who just raise your hands that are desiring the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Raise your hands. Look to the look to the Holy Father. Look to Jesus and Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, I call the power of the Holy Ghost upon these people. Looking into their hearts, but baptize them in the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, baptize these people in Jesus' name. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Start praising him now. And just let the Holy Ghost take over. Those of you that are seeking healing, we are not going to leave you out. I bring the healing blood with Jesus. We come before you right now. He said, with his stripes you are healed. I don't see a maybe. He said in two places, you are healed and you were healed. It isn't maybe you were. He said, he healed you. He took those 39 stripes on his precious back. When that cat of nine tails with the spurs on it, pulls the blood, the blood gushed out. That's the holy blood that says, with his blood, you are healed. So I call the fear, reach, just reach up, close your eyes and think about Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the cross. And he took it for, for your healing. Father, I call the anointing of the Holy Spirit through the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus under these people. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed by the power of the blood of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. I curse the diseases. I come against them. I don't come in my name. I curse them in Jesus' name. Cursing every sickness in your body. Curse through the blood, the blood of Jesus. Curse those diseases. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now remember this, children. I've talked to you, and I'm your friend. And I'll see you in the rapture, just like I said. But remember, may you have eyes to see, ears to hear, and speak the true oracles of God. You know, it takes the blood of Jesus for dying, but it takes the Holy Ghost for flying. God bless you. I love you. See you next time. Don't forget to tune in. I've got something really good coming up about Christmas in the manger. God bless you.